friends. Welcome to another week's video. This week I want to talk you through and share with you the ins and outs of making a buttonhole or otherwise known as a boutonniere. Today I am going to talk you through three main components. First of all, I'm going to talk you through planning in terms of the design, how I go about selecting ingredients, the importance of choosing a ribbon. Two, I'm going to talk you through the actual production, so the actual craftsmanship, the making of the piece, and how to construct it. I am also going to share with you a few go-to tips in terms of managing the production of your buttonholes or boutonnieres, because that is where you become a very effective and efficient floral designer. And of course, I am going to talk you through exactly the ins and outs in terms of pricing. So let's jump into it. Okay, so in terms of the ingredients that we have today, working from this side, we've got a little bit of parafilm. In Australia, we have these things that we refer to as tea bars. They are a game changer in terms of making your buttonholes super easy to attach to the suit jacket. I do have a couple pieces of wire, bunny tails, and then lots of different dried ingredients and textures. And one of the things I will talk about in terms of the actual production is we have moved entirely to using just dried ingredients. So in terms of how we select our ingredients, most often we'll go for five or six different kinds of ingredients. And it's all about combining the right textures, the right lines, and the right colors to create the overall design that we're looking for. In this instance, this is from an English ash tree, and I forged it while I was out walking the dog, saw it one day, and I thought that would be fun to make something out of, so I'm gonna experiment with it. I have since left it for three or four days, and it has dried completely. Yes, some of the berries, some of the seeds will drop off in terms of the production, but the texture is absolutely beautiful, and I also love the dark golden green undertone that this still has. This is Zigzag Waddle, and it's one of our favorites in terms of creating a beautiful line in our buttonholes. Like, look at that silhouette. It's just absolutely gorgeous. We'll pull off a few of those pieces. And again, this stuff is so great for all of your wiring because it creates really interesting silhouettes and shapes. And I love it. Then we have some dried daisy, which I will pull apart as well. And I will actually pull him off just because I know he's gonna be one that I'm competing with. Super cute, super, super cute. So these guys come in lots of different shapes. You can just pull them apart. And more often than not, highly recommend that you actually separate out your ingredients when you're doing such fine work. This I brought down, not entirely sure that I'll use it, but it is dried kangaroo paw. And one of the beautiful things about creating buttonholes using dried ingredients is that it's still entirely possible to incorporate tons of color into your designs. This kangaroo paw has a very strong silhouette and I do feel like it competes with this guy. So I probably won't use both, but I brought him just as an example. More dry daisy because these are one of my absolute favorites. And almost all of our buttonholes will include bunny tails because they're just a texture that are amazing. So one of the benefits of doing buttonholes using dried ingredients is that they end up being super duper light, which means they're less likely to get damaged on the suit jacket, plus they're way easier to put on and used in combination with the T-bar, it's like magic. I'm gonna put this guy at the back. I'm just gonna clean a bit of a white space here so you can see what's happening. One of the things I love about using dried ingredients is you don't necessarily need to wire everything because I do love exposed stems and using dried ingredients makes that really easy. So one of the things to really consider in terms of your design and your construction is that the photographer, when he's standing there, the buttonhole is worn on the left-hand side, so the best images your photographer is going to be able to get will actually be shooting this way over. So this part here is actually where you want the prominence and the focal area to be. You can actually make a very asymmetrical design and not have to worry at all about what's happening over here. I am going to let this zigzag waddle just be a little bit carefree and wild. See what happens. And they will sometimes shift around. 
when you're making them, but it's all part of the process. You don't have to fight the ingredients. You can just let them sit where you want them. And I might put them there and then I might just switch the entire silhouette around. Let the ingredients tell you where they want to be. You don't have to force them into a specific area. It's a little bit wild and crazy, but I a little bit like it. When it comes to putting the bunny tails in, we'll always look at adding in height and depth. So not everything is exactly in a line. They're not going in as one big chunk. And I am being mindful to stagger the placement. So one thing I love about these dried elements, well, there's lots of things I love, but because everything is dried, it's so light. So you can actually make your buttonholes quite a strong silhouette, but you're not adding much to the weight of them. So I am mindful of the fact that the photographer is going to view it from this side over, but it's still going to look good from the other side as well. So I will go in and I will just clip the stems. Then the next thing that I do is actually attach the buttonhole fixture, the T-bar, the back, and you want to tuck it up quite high because where that safety pin attachment is, is where it's going to attach to the suit. And you also, in an ideal world, want to make sure that this is hidden from the front so that it's not totally obvious. So this, the plastic bit on these T-bars is green to camouflage in with your stems. And you can actually go in with these T-bars and just clip off any excess. Last step is selecting the ribbon. And y'all know how much I love a good ribbon. And for me, it's really the thing that finishes a buttonhole. Use a ribbon that's going to add a complementary or contrasting texture. None of these is necessarily the wrong choice, right? You're going to be attracted to one over the other. You're going to have an idea of the mood that you'll be creating for the day. And one will just feel like the right decision to make. So it's possible that you have a lot of dusty roses and antiques in your color palette. This is absolutely a beautiful way to tie that in, in terms of your buttonhole design. If it's the middle of winter and you want something a bit more moody, this could absolutely be a good decision as well. And you can always go with something super neutral, right? Just keep everything really understated. Today, I am going to just grab a little bit of this pink. And these are from Honey Silks & Co. And I highly recommend grabbing yourself a handful of these. I've had these now for, I think, five years. Have barely, I think I've finished one container. <laughs> So they last quite a long time. I think I just checked on our website. Each of these spools is eight yards. So that's going to get you quite a few buttonholes. The way that this works, flip your buttonhole over, take a piece of the ribbon, make sure you have a little tail sticking up. Then you're simply going to use it to cover your mechanics. And that's one of the major things in terms of learning floristry design and how to be a successful designer is understanding so much of what you're doing is trying to create the look of an illusion or just pure magic for your clients and for your audience. So I must always will simply do a double knot and I will do it 
on this left hand side so that it's part of what the photographer captures. You can absolutely decide that you want to finish your buttonholes in twine. You can use double-sided satin ribbon. You can use whatever you like. I just love, 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 love the look of this chiffon silk. And it's super cost-effective. In terms of how we transport our buttonholes, recycled cardboard covered in brown craft, and we simply pin it to the board. So that makes for a super cute photo in itself. Super simple, no need for plastic containers, no need to even put these in the cool room. Keep it in a dark space. Knowing you could make this many, many, many days ahead of time is a game changer in terms of managing your production. I absolutely love it so much because we get to make these days before the actual event, put them in a cool space and they will be picture perfect no matter how hot or what the weather conditions are on the day. Highly recommend you experiment with the idea of incorporating or using only dried ingredients for your buttonholes, corsages, flower crowns, hair flowers, all of it, because it is such a game changer in terms of you being able to manage the production and getting all of your work done without having to stay up until five o'clock in the morning the day before the event. Alrighty, Rue, when it comes to understanding pricing, the industry standard that is taught for weddings and events is four times wholesale product plus a 30% labor markup plus tax, right? So that is then going to equal the price that you are going to charge your client. So in this instance, I'm going to actually work backwards and I'm going to show you the way that we would do this math. In this instance, we charge $25 Australian for our buttonholes. In Australia, that price actually includes our tax. So the first thing I'm gonna do if I'm working backwards with this equation is I'm going to deduct 10% for tax, right? So that's going to equal 250. The balance is 2250. I'm then going to subtract the 30% labor, which is going to equal that is 675 giving us a new balance. 1575, that number is then divided by four to give you $3.94, we'll say, we will just round up. So that $3.94 needs to account for and cover your sundries. So in this case, it's going to be the lapel pin or the T-bar your packaging, whatever you decide that's going to be, your ribbon, wires, if you used any, tape, and your ingredients. For us, with this style of buttonhole, that's a super easy budget to use. Remember, this product price is wholesale. So if you're going to be using expensive things like Phalaenopsis orchids, or if you're going to be using roses, definitely look at your wholesale budget and make sure you adjust it accordingly. And then do your math working up to get to the price that you're going to charge your client. And hope you guys found that video helpful. More to come from me next week, but as always, remember to hit the subscribe button. If you're watching this video and you wanna take a screen grab, show me where you're at in the world. I would love to see what's going on. And always remember, if you have a question or a comment, just ask. Talk to you later.